What's up you guys? Chet Guthrie the Dream Poet here coming to you all from the beautiful touristy town of Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And today you guys, for this vlog, I am actually joined here by my family. My dad and my sister. Um, in the past, you all have seen them before. We are going to jail. But anyway, you guys, as you all know on my channel, I do a lot of history-based stuff. But here in East Tennessee, this is about one of the largest collections of true crime related artifacts and memorabilia anywhere in the southeast. Dad, Lily. Hello, Chet. Lily, do you have anything to say? Hi, Chet. How you doing, Chet? Y'all looking forward to this? Yes, Chet. How much are we getting paid to say, Chet? Be on your channel, Chet. Chet, I want my $20 back. <laughs> this is a Sevier County Sheriff's Department card. Apparently, it is from 2007. I wonder who all has been in the back of that vehicle. And that's nice. This car was a, a dare car. As I was reading, you guys, this car right here, it was uh, donated to the museum in 2016. And before then, it was at uh, Sevier County High School. And this is really cool, you guys. This is the lobby. And I'm already feeling the gel vibes. As you can see, there is one mannequin right there. There's one mannequin right there. And then there's that one guy looking up there. Anyway, we are slowly making our way to Alcatraz. Dude, check these out. Those are actual handcuffs. <laughs> That's really cool. After a few minutes of waiting, you guys, we are almost in. Hey, Dad, Lily, what do y'all think about going to jail? Gotcha. This first room is very scary. If I'm reading this right, this is the punishment of the Dark Ages. They have a German hand axe from the time. Both public executions for torture sessions. Huh. And this is a head cage. For whatever reason, I just think about that one movie with Nicolas Cage. Bees! Bees! Probably one of the most effective types of torture, and that is water torture. It's been around for quite a while. Or a heretic fork. Ooh, that, uh... Yeah, that's kind of brutal. There's also an iron muzzle too, I guess. It looks like that is a big giant hand iron. Dungeon ankle. It was pretty brutal back then, but let's check out the ominous light. The ominous fire. The impending doom. The last thing people in the Dark Ages would ever see. They made a team friend to find him. So this next exhibit, this is based on the witch trials. That is a flogging whip. Branding iron. Of course you wouldn't, well, you would hurt pretty bad if you got that put to you. And Samuel Sewell, that was best known for the judge who presided over the Salem witch trials. He was also a vocal critic in slavery. And that is an original piece from him. And this tree right here just really, really sets the vibe of what the witch trials were. And, of course, they have a photo op. I got a ride on the ducking stool during which I was nearly drunk. I didn't do it! I didn't eat the candy! Okay, after we had that fun, this is the piracy section of the museum. I'm guessing that is probably a mannequin of Blackbeard. So, I guess I was right. That is Blackbeard, Blackbeard in the, uh, the case over there. One of the most well-known pirates to ever, ever sail the seven seas. And it's cool, they have uh, guns from the golden age of piracy. As well as knives. And the essential uh, muzzle loader, or not muzzle loader, uh, 
musket ball shooter gun piece. That's a piece of it. Cool. And if y'all don't know what these are, these are the big guns. Like, quite literally. Um, apparently, these were made back. Uh, apparently, uh, well, I don't know the year. No, 1716, and they each weighed about 65 pounds. Next up, we have the Outlaws of the West. And in this display case, there is quite a few artifacts. Artifacts? Artifacts from this time. Look at those cool shoes. Somebody took horseshoes and made that. We have a precision rifle. Policeman of the Pine Ridge Agency, 1890, South Dakota. And a police badge. And this is interesting. Those are Plains Indian War Clubs. You would not want to get hit by one of those. And of course, here's the greatest Western Western uh, thief, or I should say robber, who ever lived in the West, Billy the Kid. And if I'm not mistaken, this is about the only known photo uh, of him. And here in this case, this is probably one of the most fascinating artifacts that is here in um, the western part of the museum. This is Pancho Villa's uh, death mask. Now, who Pancho Villa was, he was a, um, I guess you could more or less say a rebel. He, um, he was a bandit. He murdered uh, his first, uh, his first person when he was 16, and he was quite a uh, folk hero to the poor. This is cool. This is Jesse James' bloodstained floorboard. That is crazy. Apparently, this is from the. Uh, the house of George B. Height in Logan County, Kentucky. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the blood stains of the man himself. That is absolutely crazy. And this is Jesse James' walking stick as well. So there are a lot of very interesting things at this museum. And it looks like this is Jesse James' shoulder holder as well, from 1847. Oh. Anyway, this was his that he held until his death. And his notebook as well. And right beside the Jesse James artifacts, they also have this letter. Uh, Pat Garrett was the one who killed Billy the Kid. And in this letter to his wife, he even specifically says, don't show this letter to anyone. And actually, as a result of Garrett killing Billy the Kid, he would be murdered in 1908 by, I believe, his followers. And they also have, uh, well, guns from the James uh, James Gang Height Revolvers. So these are from the gang of Jesse James. Now, they also have another photo op, but I'm not going to do that today because I got to get back with my family. And now we are getting into the moonshine side of true crime and if I had a little bit of money I would probably shoot that guy that is right there yes if I'm not being specific enough I'm talking about this guy right here plus that's that's a money sack on his head in this case right here uh, this is from NASCAR legend uh, Junior Johnson apparently he was jailed in 1956 for having a still. And since 2007, he has been a part of the legal moonshine uh, making trade. Legal. Yes, I said legal. And huh, these are from the age of prohibition. Now, this is really interesting, you guys. This 35-gallon moonshine still, this was captured by ATF agents in 1990. And it was found in a chicken coop. But the thing right beside it is a, um, is a detonator. Yes, that is a mini detonator. This door right here, this door is from the days of Prohibition. You see, back when alcohol was illegal back in the 20s, in the 30s, well, for one, if you were a patron, you would walk up to a door like this in the basement of a house or a shed. They would ask you for a password through this little peephole right here. And if you knew it, well, you could uh, get yourself some alcohol. And of course, Get yourself a lady or two. Now this guy right here 
Babyface Nelson. You know, that name sounds really familiar. And if you have seen the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? His character is what Babyface Nelson was based on. Yes, he was a real life person. Apparently he, um, he died after trying to escape hours later. Instead of in the movie, Babyface Nelson, he, uh, they electrified him. Um, I remember reading about this one on the Discovery Channel and the Travel Channel, but John Dillinger, while he was a public enemy, this gun right here, this wooden gun he made, and what he did is he threatened a jailer, and he managed to throw that jailer in, the, uh, in a cell, and he managed to run out with this exact gun that he threatened the jailer with because the jailer thought it was a real gun. And um, there's his mugshot photo. That is an actual photo of John Dillinger. And that is John Dillinger's death mask. Apparently that's in that little case right there. That's the hair of John Dillinger. And here is perhaps one of the most famous criminal couples that has ever walked the face of the earth. Or at least in American history. And that is Bonnie and Clyde. And here in this case are quite a few artifacts of theirs. Uh, Frank Hammer, that is his Masonic green. And Frank Hammer, he was the one who went after Bonnie and Clyde. And looks like in this case right here, that is what came out of the death car when uh, the car got shot up. This is not exactly um, uh, Bonnie's typing, but anyway, Bonnie Parker was actually an avid poet as well. And this poem written right here, this only added more fire to their, um, well, their infamy. And this is really cool. This is Clyde's, um, well, membership to uh, the Recreational Club. And least we not forget, say hello to my little friend. This machine gun right here, this was used in the 1983 film Scarface. And well, if you don't know what these little shards are, these are melted coins that were from all the way out in El Rancho, or out uh, from El Rancho, uh, the casino. Apparently it was thought that $417,000 in coins were melted into blobs, just like these seen here. And these are also more guns from The Godfather. Again, another major Hollywood motion picture. And it, it's kind of, uh, kind of weird to be standing right next to them. And since we are in the gang area, this would not be a true gang area if we did not have a piece of brick from the Valentine's Day Massacre. That was probably one of the most brutal things that Al Capone ever did. And as you can see in this brick, that is a bullet hole. And this, um, this pocket watch right here, this was owned uh, by Fred Burke, who was also a major, major, um, well, what do you, what's the word? He was a major suspect in the Valentine's Day Massacre. This is uh, Meyer Makey Cohen's uh, custom-made suit. That is interesting. Also, they have uh, a banknote from Carlos, uh, no, Carlo, Carlo Cambino. And uh, the Tufting Dawn, they have bullets from him as well. This is rather, uh, uh, they even got a Tommy gun. Now, we are in the, uh, the heist room, fraud, robbery. And this big display right here, this one is dedicated to D.B. Cooper. By the way, D.B. Cooper still has yet to be caught. And now my friends, my fans, my followers, we have come to my favorite part of the museum, serial killers. Now, there is a lot in this case. The first one I want to talk about is the Jeffrey Dahmer handcuffs. Apparently these were used when uh, convicting Jeffrey Dahmer in his housing unit. So those, those handcuffs have touched the hands of a monster. And apparently this even has Jeffrey Dahmer's handwriting. Apparently this is, I think this is from uh, prison, I think, yeah. 
Yeah, this is uh, from prison. And up here, we have uh, another artifact from uh, the son of Sam. This is um, another very, very, uh, very sad case. And let's see what this, uh, this birthday card says. Hi Pete, remember me. Happy birthday, blast for the 4th of July. You ain't forgotten, you never answered my letter, so I figured you'd moved out to the Yukon. Miss ya for Pete, a poem. Over the years, we've shed many tears. In spite of the jeers, we proudly drank our beers. On Queens Boulevard, your friend, Dave. That is another one that y'all need to look at. That is, uh, that is rather a uh, very screwed up story. And we also have some autographs from another very messed up individual. This is from Charles Manson. And this is a, a baseball that he signed, and this is a card. And this is a Judy Buenano uh, Afghan. Now, that's another uh, screwed up story, but apparently Buenano, uh, she sat on Florida's death row, and uh, anyway, what she had done is she had uh, killed her disabled son and uh, put her husband in prison. Apparently, this was given to her daughter. That's uh, apparently, you know, oh, that's also the prison number. And this, of course, is probably one of the most well-known serial killers in the entire history of the United States. And that is John Wayne Gacy. Now, if you don't know who John, Gase, John Wayne Gacy was, he killed about 16 boys and buried them in the basement of his house until he was eventually arrested and, of course, he died on death row. But one of his aliases that he liked to do was be Pogo the Clown. And I believe these are reproductions, but... Um, I think the I think his lawyer ha actually has the originals, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna walk away now. Interesting. This is uh, his paint set that he used to paint all his paintings in, and uh, this is his leather jacket. And I figured at some point we would have to talk about this monster. This right here is a um, this is a letter from Ted Bundy to Vic Africano. That is an actual writing. And even up here you have an artifact from uh, Ted Bundy's Volkswagen Beetle. And uh, these are from the uh, the Boston Strangler. Apparently it happened, uh, the killer, he killed 13 victims between 1962 and 1964. And apparently in 2013, DNA and evidence confirmed that DeSalvo's guilt in the, dare, or the death of Mary Sullivan the last strangler victim huh apparently his body was discovered uh oh this back uh, handled switchblade was recovered from uh the salvo's body in november 26 1973 after he was stabbed to death and here in this case is none other than charles manson's guitar and uh, apparently this was found in a raid at the uh, barker ranch october 12 1969 that is, uh, if y'all don't know, that's where they kind of, or he and his followers lived for a while. It was at Spawn Ranch, and this is it. This is a very, very famous part of infamous history. This, uh, this monstrosity right here. And since we are in uh, the murder area of the museum, this right here is very haunting. This is a Columbine High School yearbook. And apparently this yearbook was from somebody who was uh, a victim of that, uh, of that fateful shooting. And apparently the same person still had about $3.70 left in her lunch money account. Apparently she still carried this, uh, this backpack up until the days of the shooting. Now if y'all don't know who this guy is, y'all should. This is the Unabomber. Now in Washington they do have his cabin. Um, that's a picture of the cabin right there. And the reason why the Unabomber did what he did was actually because of just 
personal uh, revenge schemes that he dealt with as a child. But in this case right here, these are some of the artifacts from the Unabomber. Like for example, some of the uh, some of the explosives that he made, or these hacksaws. And going down here, uh, I mean this guy. Oh, and there was even Ted Kaczynski's Bible that they have here on display. And um, looks like Matthew 5 verses 3 through 12 has been specifically marked. Blood evidence right there. Uh, impressions, footwear prints, right there. This is like my criminal justice class all over again. Hey Lily, what are you looking at there? Oh, this is blind contraption. Huh, that's cool. And this is the body of a dead guy. But somebody strangled him. So that's not cool. But anyway, the CIS or CSI display kind of shows like this gunshot on the leg, the knife wound in the stomach, and I guess this guy, yeah, got strangled. Oh, cool. They have a photo op. Lily, check this out. This is Johnny Cash's shirt. And also, this is a handcrafted guitar from San Quentin Prison. Now, if y'all don't know, Johnny Cash had quite a struggle with drugs, alcohol earlier in his life. And uh, that's probably why his uh, part of his items are here. But he also played um, at San Quentin Prison. He also did that too. And here's a courtroom of what it is like in East Tennessee. This is where you don't want to be, especially in Bradley County. I remember this trial as a kid, but July 15, 2008, Casey Anthony was reported missing. She was a little girl, and eventually her mother did get arrested for first degree murder. But uh, these were, um, some of Kaylee's belongings, or at least what was left when uh, she was reported missing. And I believe Judge Perry, that's, um, I think he was the one who did the case. Um, I believe it was uh, this guy right here. Here we have ourselves hey, another John Wayne Gacy uh, painting. Where are you? This is the only truck of its kind, and this was painted in 1990. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was just a few years before John Wayne Gacy was, was electrocuted. Apparently, this is a, uh, a temporary exhibit. But this is, uh... Huh. Escape gun. Oh, it's more John Dillinger stuff. And hostage, edge, ed, seed, sire, sire. And uh, original Lake County Jail items. That's a shank. Oh yes, this is John Dillinger's final jailbreak. So I guess this is the original stuff, I suppose. Looks like that's a second generation death mask and personal items from John Dillinger. He's got a shaving brush, knife pen, homemade file, and there is Dillinger himself. Now there is a very interesting story about this setup right here. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is the same story, but uh, when Al Capone was locked up, I think it was, uh, I forgot which state it was in, but this is what one of his rooms looked like. Um, this kind of tells a little bit more about it. But uh, Al Capone would complain to guards that he'd hear these mysterious noises. He'd hear stuff walking in the middle of the night. And this prison that he was staying in was actually extremely haunted. And I think, um, I think this is a recreation of that exact same cell. Now, this is for you if you, uh, if you were really bad. Like, typically, if you murdered somebody, this would be the penalty. But this electric chair right here, this was, uh, this killed about 125 men between 1916 and 1960. 
And if I'm not mistaken, I believe this exact same chair, it was made from the wood of the uh, gallows that hung out, uh, I hung outside of the uh, Nashville's uh, penitentiary. As time passed, people stopped using electric chairs and in 1924, they used a gas chamber for the very first time in Nevada. And this was very effective. It's a rather painless death, they say, and uh, pretty much it's just like you go to sleep like an animal. It's being euthanized. At the same time, it's sad, but it, at another point, you know, sometimes people just deserve it. And in this case, there is something I want to note. These are bolts from the South Carolina electric chair. Uh, it was used from about 1912 to 1986, but if you look hard enough, you will see that the youngest person to be executed in this chair was 14 years old. And that was a young black boy by the name of George Stenny. And George Stenny was wrongfully accused, and it's just an overall sad story. I mean, he, uh, he didn't do anything wrong, but the story goes that uh, he was the one who killed the little girl, but this short, short boy did not have the ability to lift a sledgehammer. He was uh, made uh, innocent, or vacated, I should say, back in the uh, 1990s, I believe. Oh, 2014, my apologies. That was a lot of artifacts, a lot of very interesting stuff. While we're here, there is one more spot, one more set of artifacts that I want to show you all. And this one is from, uh, well, one of the biggest serial killers of all time, this monster. And to start things off, this is Ted Bundy's 1968 Volkswagen Beetle. Now, um, in 1968, or I should say in the 1970s when Ted Bundy was captured, it was actually a lottery case. Like, he had been throwing a lot of stuff away and a patrol car simply came up and talked to him. So, of all things, the thing that got a serial killer caught was loitering. This is Ted Bundy's final arrest. It was Pensacola, Florida. That, uh, that Ted Bundy was arrested in. Uh, Pensacola, Florida, this is, uh, this is an officer's uniform. I believe this is the same officer's uniform who, uh, who made the arrest of Bundy. And if you all have kept up with my channel long enough, you all have known that I have done a video on Kimberly Leach before out, in, uh, out near Lake, Sli Lake City, Florida. But anyway, this tells a little bit more about uh, about uh, Kim Leach and all of Ted Bundy's other victims which are here on the board. And this is a picture of Kim Leach, a better one. But uh, Kim Leach's mother said, I want everyone to remember the angel Kimberly Leach that was with us, that shared her life with us, her smiles with us, her hopes and dreams with us. This he, Ted Bundy was an absolute monster, but Kim Leach, she was a kind individual and this uh, typewriter was used by Ted Bundy um, I think it's what he wrote um, well while he was um, while he was uh, being incarcerated um, anyway this is uh, just some of uh, his murder kit that he had with Vlad and other artifacts kind of like what he would cover his face with and that's Ted Bundy's um, well final arrest record and that's his teeth. Looks like he had a pretty bad uh, dental dental issue because his teeth look kind of crappy. And this is probably the most iconic photo ever. Tuesday is Friday. Burn, bunny, burn. <laughs> As I was saying, there is a lot of stuff in this museum but anyway you guys this has been a definitely a fun one remember don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon always means a lot goes to show that y'all care and that y'all want to see more awesome content so without further ado you guys vlog over